Okay, so I'm being recorded, you're not, but I can ask questions nonetheless. How many people here have used Canvas conferences? Perfect. How many people here have upgraded to the premium tier of Canvas conferences? Okay, cool. How many people are uh, interested in the mobile? That was an easy question. <laughs> All right. So I wear two hats. I am the product manager for Big Blue Button, an open source web conferencing system. And I also moonlight as the CEO of Blindside Networks. We're the company that provides the hosting to and structure for Canvas conferences. I only have one slide. We've been working with, we started the Big Blue Button project in 2008, and we've been working with Instructure since 2012, when I think there were a little bit, about 19 people. So let's just say they've grown, and so have we. So Canvas conferences, the facts, it enables you to engage your students remotely. It's a real-time sharing of audio, video, slides, chat, and a screen. For the audio, we use WebRTC. How many people here know what WebRTC is? Okay, it's the capability of the browser to send and receive high quality audio uh, and video and desktop as well. So we make use of WebRTC for really good audio. Uh, we, can, we have tools for engaging students like emojis, raise hand, breakout rooms, and accessibility is very important. Every release we have an external company audit us for accessibility and then they provide a statement which we put on our website. So a couple of visuals. Uh, you can engage the students with slides. Here it's showing chat. Here it's showing four webcams being shared. If you want to go crazy with webcams, you can. Uh, here's 15 webcams being shared. We use Big Blue Button, of course, to develop Big Blue Button. The highest number of webcams we saw still was 21 webcams from Boise State University. Anybody here from Boise State? Okay. So lots of visuals, if you want. We tend to focus more on the use cases, and the use cases for us break down into three. One-to-one, -one, so that could be virtual office hours, tutoring, small group collaboration. You could have the students in the student groups collaborating amongst themselves, working together on assignment. You could be in the breakout rooms or the traditional one-to-many where you're in the instructor and you want to, want to convey some content and engage the students. Engagement is the key. Just other things about the advantages of being an open source project. We have over 250 people now, I think, on TransFX contributing localization to us around the world. It's localized into over 25 languages. Each release we pull all the localization strings and we have a community of people that keeps it up to date. Uh, we do recording as well, so the recordings are built in, they're available, you can see all the slides, all the chat, all the interactivity. And as I said earlier, accessibility is very important. So we have a third party company audit us, they go through us with our development cycle, we make sure we do as much accessibility as we possibly can and it's very much focused on the screen readers like JAWS and NVIDIA, and recently we added live closed captioning. If you have questions, just shout out along the way. Yes? Uh, yes, in fact, we're actually going through that now as we look at the, the next client, um, like the contrast. So we've gone through all the UI and tried to increase the contrast to make sure it's double A. Um, but yes, our goal is to always push accessibility forward. We know it's important to you and that makes it important to us. Yes. Yeah, so there's two levels on the free tier, which is available to everybody, we call it. The recordings last for 14 days. You can upgrade to permanent recordings, breakout rooms, and a few other capabilities, and the recordings <laughs> are permanent. Their video files are downloaded. And just to let you know, the theory behind this was, what could we give the maximum amount of benefit to everybody, but those that were probably using or paying for or wanted to get away from some commercial system would have an option to get the full capability inside of Canvas, as Canvas conferences. So there's a premium tier, the recordings are permanent, they're downloadable, and as of a few months ago, your Canvas rep can upgrade you as well. It used to be that you'd have to come to us. Uh, many people have, but your Canvas rep can take, take you through the upgrade process as well. Okay. As an open source project, we have contributors from all around the world. Here we have gotten together every six months with the developers and we do a sprint of five days. This was recently at Seneca College in Toronto. We had over 25 developers working together for five days on Big Blue Button. It was amazing. We had folks coming up from Brazil, from the States. We had folks working remotely at Tunisia. It was great. And every day we coordinated it and we had, uh, of course, used Big Blue Button for it. Okay, so with my product management hat on, there's a couple of ways, there's a, there's a sort of a Maslow hierarchy of needs that I look at the world. And stability and usability are first and foremost. 
accessibility, obviously, and then features. And those features are focused towards pedagogy and engaging the students online. And then scalability comes later on. Though I do have a nice quote from scalability. <laughs> so in terms of where does the product focus its efforts, it's on teaching and learning. So there's about 150 web conferencing systems out there right now in the market. We focus on one market, and that's online learning. So I constantly think about and listen to what people want to do to engage the remote students. And some of the features we have coming this fall are directed towards engagement. The product is very hot, very focused on the quality of it. Uh, we treat, even though it's open source, it doesn't take anything away from how we deliver it. We deliver it with the absolute highest quality. And under promise and over deliver. We like that one too. And we measure success why people want to use Big Blue Button. There's nothing that makes me feel happier than this, someone to come up and say, we looked at all the systems and we want to use Big Blue Button because it helps us engage our students. Or we want to use Big Blue Button because it's the lowest support effort or a combination of those. Or it's because it's deeply embedded and we have a great user experience. Design wins. Uh, I don't think I have a slide for this, but probably the largest deployment of Big Blue Button on the planet still remains the US Department of Defense. They went all in about two and a half years ago, replaced a commercial system, and they have a huge deployment of Big Blue Button through the DOD. They have thousands of users simultaneously during the day using it. They pay us to improve Big Blue Button as well, and the contracts state those improvements go to the open source first, so they can pull it back into the DOD. And you guys all benefit from those improvements as well. That's the power of open source working. There's a community of people who care about the, the product and want to see it all improve, and every improvement benefits everybody else. Talked about engagement a couple times. One thing I want to highlight, one thing we did a while back or that's in this release, uh, we actually read the slides. We read it for the screen readers, so JAWS can read out the slides. But we also read the slides to see if there's a poll question on it. And if there is, why my laser beam? Oh yeah, right there. So we'll actually put a button. Say, hey, we detected that there are four, looks like there's a statement with four questions. Looks like you want to do a poll. We'll just give you one button, ABC or ABCD. You can engage the students with a poll. This is what they see at the bottom. And then the responses are visible to the instructor. And then they can publish it. So the idea here was you, could, you don't have to pre-type in your polls. Just put them in your slides, and we'll make it one button for you to ask the students and engage them. I took a look at some of the stats that is used by the Canvas conferences free tier. So in the past 24 months, there's about 200 Canvas customers that are making pretty heavy use of the free tier. There have been over 21 million minutes of Canvas conference sessions and about 1.3 million users. And that's, that's the real data. That's not including people who have upgraded. That's literally the people in this room and in this conference using Canvas conferences free tier. It's very heavily used. It has also enabled other schools to win some awards. Paul, are you here? Yes, Paul. Um, so uh, Paul has sent me an email a few months ago uh, that they had actually won a fairly prestigious teaching award, and it was based on an online tutoring pilot program using Canvas and Big Blue Button. So again, from a product management point of view, that's what you want to see. I want, to, I want to see that the product has enabled the teachers to engage remote students. And here, Pensacola State College was recognized for that achievement. For just, I'm sure you all have seen it. A few visuals. You have it right inside of Canvas. Um, you can create sessions. You can see they're in progress. You can join them. And you can set it up where you can have a record time, whether you, or a length of it, whether you want it recorded or not, and whether you want that to stay there so students can always come back to it. Maybe you call it like Thursday's class from 7 to 9, and they always go to the same link inside the Canvas. They don't have to log in anywhere else. They just click and join. We, as Canvas is open source, we actually contribute uh, pull requests to Instructure for them to improve Canvas conferences based on feedback. So one of the, the recent pull requests we did was adding a delete capability. There's a bunch of other ones that we're going to add, but that one was kind of like a low-hanging fruit. So at some point in the future, you'll see the ability for instructors to delete a recording. And you'll also have, at the account level, the ability to set it up. Sometimes a school wants everything recorded. For those that are using Canvas for online tutoring and they want every session recorded, you'll be able, at the account level, to set it up so that there will not be a choice. Everything will be recorded. Or if you wanted to have nothing recorded, you'd have the option to say, um, disable recordings. So it gives you a bit more control over how you want to set up and use Canvas. OK, current release. 
quickly, probably the biggest thing to highlight is breakout rooms. That's in the premium tier. The idea is that you can engage students, put them into groups, have them collaborate, bring them back. So the instructor has this interface where they can see the students, put them into groups, uh, give them a time limit, jump into the sessions. Uh, when, the student, when the instructor does start the breakout rooms, the students will get a message, you've been invited to join a breakout room, yes, no. It'll open up in a new tab. Uh, they'll see how much, uh, much time is remaining, kind of like that clock down, countdown clock. And the instructor actually has visibility in terms of the rooms, how many people are there, and they can listen in or they can join directly. So no one leaves the main session. It's just in the same, in the, it's in the same tab. They just open up in a new tab. They're in the breakout room. The audio is in the new tab, but students can all flip back to the main tab. Where the instructor's kind of hanging out. Maybe ask a question. The instructor can jump in, help out, jump back. It's very fluid. Not yet, but it's a good question, and we're working on it. It's, it's actually, we, we kind of can record it, but there's a little work we have to do in Canvas conferences itself so that the recordings are grouped together with the conference. They're not kind of spread. So there's a work underway to do that, but a really good question. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, no, please. So the, the question, yes. So the repeat the question is, do the, can the instructor, can the, can the students choose the time at which they do their breakout rooms? And I think the way to do that would be with student groups. So the instructor can set up the students into student groups. All student groups have access to Canvas conferences. They can go into it any time. They go in as a moderator, which means they can make themselves or other people a presenter, and they can use that to collaborate. Some schools will have the students go in and, into a student group and do a recording. Give me a two minute recording you know, it's easy to talk for 10 minutes on something, it's harder to talk for two minutes on something. Give me a two minute recording and give me the recording as an assignment. So they have that capability in the groups. There was another question? Sorry, I'm being blinded. Yes, I'll repeat it. Right, so we'll do the live captioning now. We have it where a stenographer can come in and do live captioning with a stenograph machine. We can do live captioning. That's built into the free tier. Uh, all you need to do is um, bring the captioner in as a moderator. Yes, so, so there's two types of captioning. There's live and there's after the fact with like an SRT file or that. So we, we got the live caption covered. And you guys know art. Yes, so. No, in fact, where we kind of want to get the captioning is ARC seems to be doing, going down that road. If we can give you the recordings that flow into ARC, then you could take advantage of everything ARC can provide. So there's a, there's a master plan here. But we'll also add the ability at some point for you to upload an SRT file. Again, we, we kind of did the harder part first, the live captioning. The uploading it would mean we would need to give a little bit of an interface inside of Canvas conferences again, where we have the ability to upload an SRT file. I have, I have some business cards here, pick it up. If you think captioning is the most important thing that you need to see in the product, you email me and say, Fred, I really need to see captioning. This helps me prioritize. Yes? We could, and that's, it's an obvious thing to do on the open source side, it's just, we, the priorities are, are kind of in other places where I'll show you what we're doing for um, the topic of this discussion, mobile. Um, but keep the questions coming, and if the captioning seems like it's really important, I know what to do when we go back. Yes? Yeah, so the question was, if you have students record something, let's say for two minutes, can it be a downloadable file? On the premium tier, the recordings are permanent and they are downloadable as a video file. It has everything except the chat in it. You can download it, you can upload it to YouTube, you can edit it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's an MP4 file. Okay, good questions. Yes? Uh, let, me t let me address that in a, oh, actually I think I had it back here. Uh, this was in, there. Uh, Xavier, are you here? So uh, National University College is a fully online university. They run it with canvases. Yes, 
Does, is it you, Xavier? No. Sorry. Um, they run it fully online with, uh, with uh, Canvas and using Canvas conferences. They recently had their graduation ceremony online, of course, where the chancellor's there and the mascot is there and they're talking and everyone's high-fiving each other in the chat as their names being read out in the honor roll. It was 290 students. Okay, so that's a sense of how large we can support. We say in our documentation 100 users or less, but that's because we're conservative and we like to under-promise and over-deliver, but we can handle pretty large sizes. It's the same. Okay. Yeah, there's no two different versions. We just turn on a few more features. Um, so, yes. Yes, so the number of, how many webcams can you show? The how, largest I've seen is 21 webcams at the same time. And we'll record all of them. Other questions? Yes. No, there's no hard-coded limit. So um, at, at some point, things may start slowing down. But um, we would still recommend 100 or less, knowing that maybe not everybody listens to the recommendations, but we at least have double the capacity we know. So I did a sampling a while back of like the last 100,000 sessions that were on the free tier. 169 of them were over 50. So by far the vast majority are these smaller collaborative sessions, and that's really the target we want to go after. We're not trying to build a webinar system, we want it to be collaborative. Okay, how much time do I have left? Anybody? How much time? Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so I want to talk about. Okay, yes, please. Yeah, so there's um, uh, University of Florida has set up these dedicated rooms for virtual classrooms. They project. Anybody here from University of Florida? Yes. Um, these are the, uh, the virtual classrooms you have where the projector projects onto the back wall uh, button so this director can see the remote students and, the instruct and there's somebody sitting on the side that's switching the video feeds for the remote students uh, using a, a black magic, I think, a switcher. So it's either the, the desktop of the instructor or maybe a scene of, uh, or, or camera facing straight down. I've got some neat screenshots where the instructor's writing math out on a piece of paper where a camera is focused right down on top of it. So um, anything that uh, your Windows recognizes as a direct media device can be recognized by a big blue button and, proje and projected. So good questions. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the roadmap, things that we're working on for this fall. Bless you. So three features, um, and the, the mobile stuff is in parallel. Multi-user whiteboard. We get this a lot from K-12. I cannot have students sit there for an hour and just watch me. I need to kinetically engage them, I need to mentally engage them, I need them to be talking, responding to polls. So there'll be a button on the toolbar here which will let you basically turn on, uh, everyone's can draw on the whiteboard. Now, we've, we've trusted this in, in, in our development group. It quickly degrades into everybody's following, everyone's mouse around, it's a lot of fun. Um, but for certain usages, it does make a lot of sense. So you're gonna have the ability to have multiple people drawing on the whiteboard at the same time. The instructor still controls it and can clear it all out if they want. The second is shared notes. So there'll be a, par there'll be a layout where you can go to that will give you a shared notes area which is like a collaborative notepad. And that means if you want the students to say, okay, I need you to give me the top five points that I made during this lecture. Force them to recall what they've just gone through. They can all collaborate together in shared notes. Where we're going to for this, which is not in this coming release, but this is my vision, is that in the breakout rooms, the shared notes can be turned into slides. So you could have a couple bullet points, maybe a heading, a couple more bullet points, and we turn it into two slides. Those slides come back into the main room for the instructor, and the instructor can say, okay, group A, here are your slides, talk for five minutes, so that they can collaborate and create content. So that's the, this is the first step towards it, but you'll have it right inside for collaboration. Yes. Oh, so my goal is that we will release this this fall. So in September, in, and I will say the, provi the proviso, if there's anything that I feel like still needs a bit more baking, we'll bake it a bit more. But my goal is this stuff goes live. And just like in structure, you don't do anything. You just see the newer version and have the newer features. Okay, question. It's a good question, would the shared notes disappear? Would students be able to save them? So there'll be like a save button here. 
Uh, we're not going to put them into the recordings. We figured that they're there as kind of like notes during the class, but you could copy them to clipboard or you could save them. Other questions? Yes. They'll be uh, free to hear, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the it's baked in. It's pretty much got everything except the permanent recordings and breakout rooms and a few other things that are. No. So the videos in the free tier come as this synchronized playback of audio, video, slides, chat, but they're not savable. They're savable in the premium tier. It's it's actually how the open source works in terms of like how the video format. It wasn't any great grand design, um, but it, it does kind of give people reason if they really want those recordings and they want them to be permanent, we can cover you on the premium tier. Question. So let me talk to Flash. So Adobe announced that they're end of life in Flash at, 20, at the end of 2020, which is three and a half years from now. We will be well moved over to HTML5 by then. We have been working on the HTML5 client very hard for a very long time. You're going to see the progress on the slide. Um, Flash has been very good for us. When I look at 21 million minutes, people didn't care whether it was Flash or not. It just worked. Um, and to the extent Microsoft had built Flash, has now built Flash into Edge, and they keep it up to date for you as part of Windows Update. So the, the adoption of Flash has been increasing, but there's just been more and more attractive alternatives that don't require you to use Flash. So we're still improving the Flash client. But the way we're doing the HTML5 client is that students can be in the same, they could use either client, and you don't care as the instructor. So we're not telling you like some vendors, oh, this new version, you have to just leave the old version and all those features you loved, gone. No, Big Blue Button continues to improve. We are gonna provide you the HTML5 client, which will increasingly have more capabilities of the Flash client. And at some point, we'll just switch over. But it'll be a very smooth transition. Yes. It does. Yeah, the Firefox and Chrome will give you access to the uh, the live to the microphone. This is with WebRTC. Oh no, it is HTML5. There is no plugins. It will run out of the box. Uh, but it's just the browsers are giving you the capability to send media, which previously you had to use Flash for. So over the years, the web real-time communications, um, and we leverage that already for the audio. The browser has amazing support for audio. So if you find the audio in Canvas conferences to be really good using Firefox or Chrome, it's because we're leveraging the browser's ability and we're just gonna continually leverage more and more of the browser. Yes? It falls back to Flash. It still works. Oh, we'll have you all over HTML5. We, we can only solve the problems we can deal with, right? But I have a feeling that all the browsers, so Apple announced an iOS and desktop support for WebRTC, and Edge has WebRTC support. So if you have somebody in three and a half years still you wanting to use IE, God love them. <laughs> I haven't said it. <laughs> but I will say in a few minutes. Okay. That was good. All right. The third thing is the desktop sharing. So we use a Java applet right now because Flash can't look outside the browser and see your desktop. We launched to a Java applet, works really well on Mac, there's a or PC, there's a few more steps you have to do on Mac, uh, but we're gonna be leveraging the browser's support for WebRTC to send the user's desktop or an application. So that'll mean it'll be easier to share your desktop, and you can even do it on a Chromebook. Yes, believe me, it has been a journey for us. We have improved desktop sharing, and it was, there was two things that separated the Big Blue Button Open Source Project really from a commercial conferencing system. One was high quality audio, which we got years ago with WebRTC, and the second is really good desktop sharing with no plugins, and that's what we have here. There's nothing you need to install using Canvas conferences. Your students are not prompted to download and install anything. It just works. Yes? I just wanted to point out, it's gonna, it's gonna make my life great in the future that I mentioned, because I wanna use troubleshooting, uh, but most troubleshooting is using Big Blue Button, but it's probably gonna force our, force our R&D into that area, that share your desktop with Big Blue Button. The uh, Microsoft, or sorry, uh, Firefox and Chrome do it slightly differently, but you don't have to install any. You, Chrome actually has you install an extension, which is like 30 lines of, Java, of JavaScript, and that's how it, it, it convinces itself that the user has given permission to share their desktop. 
Um, and those, that extension is tied to the site, the servers by which Chrome will allow you to share your desktop, like stream your desktop to. So there'll be like a, a prompt to say and download the extension. You'll go to the Chrome Play Store, you click install, it takes back, and then you can do the, ins the installation, or you can do the desktop sharing. Firefox, it's pretty much straightforward. It'll just say, do you want to share an application or a window? It'll drop down, give you a warning, be careful, you know, you're sharing your desktop and so on, but it will do it. So uh, there'll be a little bit of training, but you won't have to have Java installed. We will still have the desktop sharing with Java as a fallback. So if those people who are hanging on to IE, they can still share their desktop and Safari as well. Until, I don't know that Apple, Apple did not support WebRTC desktop sharing in their announcement for uh, WebRTC support in Safari, but they'll kind of get there because that's where the market's going. Yes, yep. Okay, so we're gonna do a UI refresh as well. This is the current UI for Canvas conferences. It's been working well for years. Uh, we had a graphic designer come through and basically just take the, the colors, make them a little more somber, group the, the buttons up and sort of more similar icons uh, and just basically give it a UI refresh. Same functionality. I think the only thing that's gonna be different is that the mute button doesn't sit up here, it sits over here, but it will look a little more modern. And this is boring some of the UI language that we designed for the mobile. And let's talk about mobile. So the goal is that on the open source project, we will have a mobile client out by the end of this year. You can expect that the integration into Canvas conferences will trail that. So sometime after we release our mobile client, we are going to, you're gonna see it in the, in the Canvas side. So it'll probably be 2018, but we're getting there. A lot of good work's gone into it but not for this fall, not for this fall. So the challenge with mobile is you need to support both uh, Android and iOS, and the two are not the same, but we have it working. If the internet was good for me, I can actually show it to you running here on my iPad. Um, we will probably do some trials of the mobile client, and what I'd ask is if you're interested in being part of the trial, uh, you can do test flight if, you're, if you know those folks, are, if you know how the Apple works, grab my business card and just email me and say, hey Fred, can I check out the mobile client when, there's, when it's far enough along? And I'll add you to the test. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some visuals now of what it looks like. Same functionality for the viewer, and just I'm gonna tell you up front, what we're targeting to for the mobile client is to enable a student to come into the session and have everything except two-way video. The video still presents a bit of challenges, but if you, can see the, if you can see the slides, see the desktop sharing, hear the instructor, respond to polls, two-way chat, do the closed captioning, do the breakout rooms, do the emoji. If you have all that and you're on your mobile device, you've probably covered about 95% of the use cases. We will continue to improve the HTML5 client as time goes on and you'll see it iterate closer and closer to what the Flash client can do. And again, my goal is a very smooth transition. Oh, yes, okay. Did you? All right, so I'm gonna go in here. Actually, I'll show you the slides first. I think what we'll do is if I have time at the end, I'll kind of hold it up and, and show it to you live but you can come by after it and I'll show it to you live. So this is what the students would see when they join. How do you want to join? Listen only, microphone. This is what the interface looks like. So here I have it on an iPad. I took screenshots right off of it. So the users list is on the left. You click public chat, you can see the public chat. And this is the presentation area and there are your controls at the bottom. You can mute, you can raise your hand, you can mute and mute and you can leave the audio. Um, you can turn it, rotate, so it's, it's, um, it's responsive to the, to the orientation. Okay, so here I am turning it uh, landscape. I've hidden the users list, which is probably what students on a mobile device will probably do. And here I'm, I'm following the instructor, they've asked a question and I can see the results in the poll. So I just tap and those, those results come back to the instructor. Instructor doesn't care, is not caring whether you're on the mobile client, are you on the, the web client, you're getting back the poll results. Again, our goal is that you don't care. The promise of Big Blue Button is you never have to ask the student, can you see what I'm pointing at? So instructor's pointing right there, that's the same for everybody. So it all comes through. And when the instructor finishes, they can publish the polls. The polls appear here. Again, it's the exact same experience in terms of the presentation. Um, and you can do writing as well. Yes, question. So you're saying this is changing the uh, Yeah. Um, so the good thing is that we're not broadcasting a video stream here. The design of Big Blue Button is that you upload your slides and those slides come down and cached. Once they're cached, the amount of data you get is an audio stream, 50 kilobits a second, and these mouse movements or the command to go next and previous or respond to the poll. 
very little bandwidth. This is how we achieve like 290 people in a session. So um, if you just want to stream a video, you know, you can, you, there's lots of choices to do that. But pedagogically, it's engaging with content. And that drives you back towards, OK, the content is on the slides, and I need you guys to respond either to polls, emojis, the chat, raise hand. So that's where we focus on. So it kind of washes out that the, that the bandwidth is not that high. Okay. There's the public chat. There's the users list. So you can see the users. You can see who's a moderator. Uh, you can see how many chat messages are over there. There's your emojis. So you can tap thumbs up, thumbs down, happy, sad. And uh, in terms of the settings, we have support for closed captionings and some auto notifications. And the lo locales are all built in. The guys have been working on this and accessibility as well. We use the RE interface. We have a, a full-time developer. And what they do is they work on accessibility for the HTML5 client. So we are all in in terms of accessibility. Okay, And then you can choose a closed captioning in terms of what the font family is, the font size. And the captions appear on the right-hand side right here. Okay. And this is what you'd see if the instructor was sharing. The presentation area would be replaced by whatever the screen is are sharing. Okay. So I said earlier, we're doing this in phases. There's a lot of work to be done, but a lot of work has already been done. I can show you live here. Uh, all the viewer capabilities minus two-way video. So if you're on a mobile device, and I can show you running on my iPhone as well. Uh, we're not showing you the presenter's face, but we're showing you all the other content and giving you all the other way to interact. And then in 2018, so I should say this is the open source release. The Canvas re integration will come in 2018. Uh, in 2018, we will continue to iterate on the HTML5 client. It will be like you have now. There's nothing to install. You're just going to go to a page, and you'll have a newer version of it. And we will increasingly add the moderator and presenter capabilities, like uploading slides, muting other people, and so on. So the good thing is, is we've already built it once. We know exactly what to do, and we're building it all over again in HTML5, but again as an open source. Yes, in the back. I'm going to defer the actual nuances of how you exactly get into it because that is going to work. I want to work with a structure on that to so make sure because they have the mobile app and they have the HTML interface. But all to say is we're not going to give the students skill testing questions. Ideally, if you're on a mobile device, you just get the mobile client. You know, if you're on your web, if you're on your desktop, you get the desktop client or the web client, and it just works. Okay. So you, we have a test site up right now where you can test a build of the HTML5 client. You can go to test.bigbluebutton.org, and you can open up two browser windows. And one, you can log in with the HTML5 client, and the other, you can log in with the Flash client. And you can upload slides, and you can see it updating in the HTML5 client. So you may see other people in there with uh, chatting or whatever, go, but you can go ahead and try it. And we're going to be updating this as we go through our development cycle. And you can always give me feedback. That's the best. And that. Uh, this is the links for all things Big Blue Button, for our website, for our Twitter account, for the documentation, our Facebook, and our homepage. And in summary, Big Blue Button is an open source web conferencing system. We focus on one market, online learning. And at this point, I'll turn it over to any questions you have, and thanks for the opportunity to share. <laughs>